you can't really identify a vitamin D deficiency in the short term. It's not like you can just skip a week of going outside and suddenly notice a bunch of symptoms outside of maybe just your mood, right? Unfortunately, it takes it becoming more severe. And when you look at the data, you look at the literature, and you look at the mechanistic actions, yeah, when you start having a lot of these things that we're gonna talk about happening together, it's probably time to get your vitamin D levels checked. So let's just go ahead and start off with number one. Hey, before we dive in, I popped a link for today's video sponsor, which is LMNT Electrolytes, Element Electrolytes. So if you want a no calorie or very low calorie, no sugar way to just get salt, potassium, magnesium in, definitely recommend you give them a shot. They've been a sponsor on this channel for a long time. And because of that, that link down below gets you a free variety pack of all their different flavors with any purchase. So you get a free variety pack that you can give to a friend, you can keep for yourself if you wanna hoard it, you can eat them all in one serving, but that would be a little crazy. Anyhow, point is, is electrolytes are awesome when it comes down to different replacements for drinks throughout the day, but also if you're moving or you just wanna start your day in lieu of coffee, something like that, it just feels good and it perks you up. So anyhow, that link is down below. It's drinklmnt.com slash Thomas drinklmnt.com slash Thomas, and that gets you a free variety pack. So that link down below. The first one is a little vague, but we have to start there. Fatigue. Now, you're gonna skip through this section because yeah, you're, everyone's tired, right? The reality is we have to look at the sleep data because there's no real relationship between vitamin D and fatigue directly. What we do see is a relationship between vitamin D and sleep quality, and that's huge data. And then we see vitamin D and inflammation, all which can impact, of course, how you feel and your energy levels. So there was a study published in Clinical Sleep Medicine that found a direct correlation between low levels of vitamin D being equated to about 30 minutes less sleep on average. So if you have low vitamin D, you can look at data and say, well, it's estimated that that person is probably getting 30 minutes less sleep than someone that has adequate vitamin D. That is certainly enough to make you feel fatigued, especially as it stacks up over time. There was a study that did at least correlate vitamin D with fatigue. It was published in Nutrients, and it demonstrated that vitamin D levels were directly correlated with fatigue. So the more vitamin D, the lower the overall energy, the higher the vitamin D, the more energy. So definitely a relationship there. We just don't have a mechanistic reason. Now we move into the next one, depression. Now there's a couple different avenues here. Obviously not going out in the sun, not getting that sunlight, that can impact your, your mood. It can definitely impact depression. There's plenty of literature there. But there's also reasons that vitamin D directly can impact your mood. The Indian Journal of Psychology Medicine published a paper that analyzed 61 different articles, and it found that there is a direct relationship between vitamin D and depression. Low vitamin D equaled high amounts of depression. And this is looking at a lot of data. Now, what is the mechanism here? It's hypothesized that it's an immune-related mechanism. So what we do know from a lot of data is that vitamin D regulates sort of the potency of the immune system. So when our vitamin D levels are high, our immune system is more laser targeted and can do its job better. When vitamin D is low, it doesn't mean that the immune system just doesn't turn on. Sometimes it means that the immune system goes into overdrive and triggers what's called neuroinflammation, which there is a very solid link between neuroinflammation and depression anxiety. So again, if you're tired and you're depressed, it doesn't mean you're just vitamin D deficient. There's obviously a lot of things going on. But anyhow, let's keep moving on. Number three is going to be your bone density is becoming a serious issue. Now, again, this is one of those things where you don't just like walk out of the house one day and say, you know what? Oh man, Jimmy, my, you know, my elbows feel like the bones are a little weak today. It's one of these things that pops up randomly. Maybe some test, a DEXA scan, an X-ray, something where all of a sudden they're like, you know what? Your bone density is not very good. And that's just something to pay attention to because it's death by a thousand cuts here. It's like all of a sudden you're like, okay, I'm depressed, I'm fatigued, my bone density, maybe it's time to address just this very simple potential solution here, my vitamin D. Now, number four is going to be chronic pain, chronic joint pain, and overall inflammation, inflamed gut in particular. So you just feel like always having IBS, always having these issues, always feeling joint pain. Well, what's the correlation here? How does this work? Well, there's a study in British Journal of Nutrition. It was interesting. It took diabetic neuropathy patients that had foot infections, okay? And they looked at their vitamin D levels and they looked at the inflammatory cytokines associated, right? So what they found is that people that had lower levels of vitamin D had an astronomically higher level of C-reactive protein, interleukin-6, all these cytokines to fight this infection. So much so that the researchers literally said the difference between the low vitamin D and the high vitamin D groups was quote unquote remarkable 
in terms of how different it was. Like there were huge changes in the amount of activity that the immune system had to sort of channel into dealing with this foot infection if vitamin D levels were low compared to adequate. So we definitely have a connection there. Now, as we get towards the end of this video, I'm gonna talk about constructive ways to increase your vitamin D because I think it's a little bit misleading and oversimplified to say, go out and get sun because I think there's a fundamental issue going on that we aren't able to address. Why is it that we have so much of a vitamin D issue, especially in the United States, but all over the world, even if we are outside? I think there's something deeply rooted since vitamin D is a hormone, and we need to address the bigger picture before we just sort of put a Band-Aid on it with synthetic vitamin D. I think the vitamin D has a place. I just feel like we need to address a bigger picture, and that it could be nutritional, it could be micronutrient deficiencies, it could be activity. Anyway, let's move on. Number five is a very dangerous one. If you start noticing that you're losing muscle mass, that could be a problem. Obviously, losing muscle mass would be a sign of some much bigger issues that you probably want to be concerned with independent of vitamin D. But let's check this out. There was a study published in the journal Gerontology that took a look at older adults, took a look at people over the age of 60, and had them do some performance battery tests. And it found that over the course of 12 months, their 400 meter walk speed decreased, but what was even more interesting was their short physical performance battery score decreased. So their overall strength, their overall stamina, their speed all decreased when they were low in vitamin D. Now, that doesn't tell us everything. We do have to look at some mechanistic stuff. What's potentially happening? Why does vitamin D play a role when it comes down to muscle? Well, vitamin D has the potential to suppress what are called atrophy genes. It suppresses the transcription factors for atrophy genes. That sounds like Greek. Atrophy is muscle wasting. Okay, we have genes that do help regulate the rate at which we break down muscle, the rate at which we atrophy. Transcription factors are sort of what just like flips the switch to start that whole gene process. Vitamin D basically stops or slows down these atrophy genes from expressing. So it's basically telling the body at sort of a very like high level, hey, don't break down as much muscle. A very important piece that we tend to overlook. Now, it doesn't mean that if you take vitamin D, you're never gonna break down muscle. Like there's simple thermodynamics, there's simple muscle protein synthesis versus breakdown. So don't get with the wrong idea. But there is a strong correlation with people getting older, their vitamin D levels decreasing and atrophying that we probably shouldn't ignore. Now, closely alongside that, we have number six, which is fat gain. Maybe you're accumulating fat at a faster rate, particularly around the belly, right? There was a study published in Public Health Nutrition that looked at this specifically. They found that low levels of vitamin D were correlated with an increase in waist circumference. As a matter of fact, when they looked at large scale data, they were able to predict with astonishing accuracy just by looking at someone's vitamin D levels, how much bigger their waist was gonna be. Low levels of vitamin D were associated with a 10 or greater percent increase in waist circumference over a period of time. And they could just look at be like, oh, that person was low in vitamin D, I bet you their waist was bigger. <laughs> Directly looking over on the spreadsheet, yep, their waist was bigger. So we have a pretty clear correlation there. The question that we have to ask though is why? And the only thing that we can look at now is in our fat tissue, we have vitamin D receptors. That's kind of odd because it suggests that vitamin D obviously plays a role in doing something in our fat tissue. And right now the hypothesis is it might regulate storage. It might regulate tissue adaptation and change. So when we are deficient in vitamin D, we don't have that regulatory effect in the fat tissue. So maybe it grows more. It's speculative, but it's the strongest hypothesis that we have right now. And it goes right in line with losing muscle too. So it's got all these things like death by a thousand cuts, you're fatigued, your mood sucks, you're not sleeping, your bones are weak, you're feeling fat, you feel like you're losing muscle, right? It's all adding up. Next up is a scary one. Your blood sugar is getting high. Like you're starting to notice like, wait a minute, I'm not controlling my blood sugar as well or maybe even you're developing insulin resistance. There's a study published in Diabetes Care that took a look at over 700 at-risk for diabetes people, and they found that the lower their levels of vitamin D, the worse their glucose tolerance was, the ability to manage glucose, the higher their risk of insulin resistance was, and the increase that they saw in beta cell dysfunction was scary. So basically, they were not producing as much insulin. Their beta cells in their pancreas were not able to produce insulin as well. So this long-term can definitely lead to some blood sugar issues, right? It can potentially even lead to diabetes. Now, mechanistically, what might be happening here with insulin resistance 
is that vitamin D plays a role in the expression of insulin receptor cells. So basically, at a genetic level, vitamin D helps us produce these insulin receptor cells so we can actually catch insulin. So without vitamin D, we don't have as much in the way of insulin receptors, which means that insulin isn't able to dock, which means that we're not able to actually catch the glucose properly. So we're not able to complete this loop that we need with glucose and insulin and all this. So that definitely plays a role. So all these things kind of add up to sound like metabolic dysfunction, right? That's what's interesting. The interplay between vitamin D and metabolic dysfunction and metabolic syndrome is eerily close. So all these things, right? They stack up, but there's still a couple more. You're getting respiratory infections all the time. Now you see how we're kind of increasing in severity here. Basic problems, and now we're getting into more specific things. The respiratory infections thing is a big deal. Remember how I talked about vitamin D and the immune system? So vitamin D sort of increases the potency of the immune system. So it's not just like in the winter time how you get more colds or whatever. That has something to do with it, but at a deeper level, it's very, very important for our overall immune system. Now, there was a study that was published in the journal Tropical Doctors that was a pretty large-scale study, and it did determine, based upon this data, that lower vitamin D was associated with more occurrences of lower respiratory tract infections, and lower vitamin D was also correlated with the severity of the respiratory infection. Now, we back this up with another paper that was published in Respiratory Research where they took a look at 300 random patients with pneumonia and they found the same thing. Lower vitamin D was inversely correlated with the severity. So the lower the vitamin D, the worse the symptoms of the pneumonia or respiratory infections. So why does it seem to manifest in the respiratory tract? Probably because that's where like when our resistances run down, we tend to pick things up. Like if you're working out like a madman and not recovering, a lot of times you get it in the lungs, right? Anyhow, moving on to the very last one. Your skin is trashed. It's dry, you're getting psoriasis, you're getting dermatitis. What's happening here? Well, you notice that in the summertime, you like your skin a lot more, right? It's not just because you're suntanned. Like that definitely plays a part. Don't worry, I like to be jacked and tan, it's fun. But there's also a piece we have to look at, the quality of our skin, right? So because it has to do with the immune system and inflammation, we have to remember that. Healthy skin that's not inflamed is going to look fresher. It's gonna have a better glow, right? There's a study published in Skin Pharmacology and Physiology that found an inverse relationship between vitamin D and psoriasis and atopic dermatitis. So again, we have that correlation there. So it comes down, once again, to the inflammation. If your skin is inflamed, you are going to have autoimmune conditions pop up. You're gonna have all kinds of other things manifest to the skin. It's still an organ and it is what is front facing the most. So you're lacking that glow, you're lacking the complexion you want. All this kind of adding up. So let's talk real quick on how you can implement vitamin D appropriately, because I don't want you to just say, I'm gonna take vitamin D for vitamin D's sake. Step one is by increasing your vitamin D intake through maybe some eggs or some fish. I would recommend like two eggs or three eggs per day. Trust me, it's not gonna be an issue. The dietary cholesterol doesn't necessarily contribute to serum cholesterol in a negative fashion. And it's worth it to get the vitamin D. But food sources of vitamin D are not the same thing as getting it from the sun. You should be making a concerted effort to get it from the sun. And although the idea of getting low light sun is great for the mood and great for the circadian biology, as Andrew Huberman talks about, it's not as good for getting that vitamin D. So what I don't want us to do is focus on only getting low light sun in the morning and evening because Andrew Huberman tells us to. That's great and that works and I love Hubie, he's great, but we also do need to get sun when it's up top so we get maximum UV and actually get the vitamin D as well. I think we have an overuse of sunscreen to the point where we're blocking it all. Don't get me wrong, protect your skin, but you also need vitamin D to a certain degree as well. We don't want to degrade that. As far as supplementation is concerned, cod liver oil would be your best bet. That way you're getting vitamin D, vitamin A, and omega-3 in sort of a punch that works synergistically together. And lastly, you want to use vitamin D in 2000 IU increments. And you want to do it on days that you are not able to get in the sun. And you want to do it like evening time. Even though some people say vitamin D is going to keep you awake, it doesn't work like that at all, trust me. You're gonna absorb it better later in the afternoon. So synthetic vitamin D on days you cannot get out in the sun, don't take it on days you do get out in the sun. Because if there is a feedback loop that we're potentially disrupting here, we don't wanna mess with it. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.